hi everybody and welcome to Hannah's Happy Space. My name is Hannah and you join me here at home in my happy space. Um, so where to start? It has been quite some time since I have last recorded. So um, I had a look on YouTube uh, earlier and I think it's over four months, something like that. Um, no major reasons why not, just life I guess. I um, won't go into too much detail about all that but um, yeah I'm here now and um, have a mountain of um, finished objects to show you today. But before we get into that I'll just um, let you know a little bit about who I am um, as I've had a flurry of new subscribers. Um, if you are a new subscriber or um, even if you're a current subscriber um, if you could let me know how you came across the channel, especially if it was on recommendation uh, from another podcaster, then um, I can give them a little thanks, which is always great. So, like I said, I am Hannah. I live in Devon um, in England on the edge of Dartmoor. Um, I live with my uh, older sister, Cara, and her son, Sebi. If you've watched the podcast before, you ha will have seen Sebi on here before and Cara has featured in Vlogmas. So, um, I don't think I've got a huge amount of, uh, you know, life updates to let you know about. Don't lead the most exciting of lives. <laughs> um, but, you know, four months is a little while. So let's have a think. Um, it's some holidays at the moment. I will say now it is hot. That's the only one, the only time I'm going to mention it. Um, if you watch any other British podcasters over the this week um, and a couple of weeks ago, we were in a bit of a heat wave. And you'll know it's hot in England. So <laughs> just to let you know that, um, I was going to put the fan on, but um, it was too noisy. So it's, that's just it. It's hot, but I am going to show you a load of woolly items to wear, which are going to take months now until they're able to wear. Anyway, like I say, some holidays. Sebi's not here. He's um, away this weekend. He is um, at his dad's down in Cornwall, but he is taking part in his final golf um, tournament, I guess, or round of the tournament on Sunday. And currently uh, he is top of the leaderboard. So he's got his fingers crossed that he wins at St. Anna Dock, which is his favourite course or his, you know, course he plays at most. I don't know a lot about golf, I'll be honest. Um, so he's hoping uh, to do very well. Uh, he is playing in a, I think it's like a junior mini open type of thing. I'm sure he'll correct me on that if I am wrong. But yeah, he is um, enjoying his summer holidays, uh, being very sporty. <laughs> Um, what else has been up to? Uh, my youngest brother Finley, he came home from university for a couple of months, nice to see him. Uh, he is a board game fanatic so we have played all sorts of weird and wonderful board games. Um, if you follow me on Instagram you might have seen um, a couple of those different things that I've been up to with him. Uh, my net other brother Harry, he was 21 the other week which is quite frightening. <laughs> Um, he had a lovely birthday. I've had a birthday um, at the beginning of July. I was 35. <sighs> what else have we been up to? Uh, mind blank. You know, the type of things that go on in some holidays. Um, you know, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> Can't say we've been enjoying the weather. A bit, a bit. Um, yeah, so... Can I think of anything else? If you follow uh, Ruth Loves to Knit, you'll know that me and her are very good friends. Hi, Ruth. Um, we've been out to visit her while she's been home alone. Um, she's been to visit us um, a few times. So, yeah. And obviously, I have been doing um, a lot of crafting. I went through a bit of a stage of, I just went off knitting altogether. Didn't want to do it. Um, that's come back, phew. <laughs> so I have got a couple of knitting things to show you. It's mainly crochet today. Um, got, I'm looking this side because you can just see just 
oh down that's difficult to do down there um, is a pile of things i have got crochet i've got knitting i've got sewing and i've got cross stitch um i have got just a couple of whips um if this goes on for ages showing you all this lot i won't show you those and i'll, I'll keep those for next time um <clears throat> yeah if you follow me on instagram you might have seen some of these before i am over on instagram like i say um as hannah's underscore happy underscore space that will be down in the um description box below and anything that i talk about hopefully will be either described or linked down in that box below if it's not just drop me a message and i'll um i'll do my best to let you know what information i've forgotten to give you um okay i'm just have a quick drink I haven't done this for so long and i can feel myself umming and erring and so just one moment okay is that everything i need to tell you <clears throat> before we get into the mound of finished objects i think so if i've forgotten anything i'll pop it in at some other point so let's start with i thought um because i've got a bit of everything i'd split it into um sections so we'll start with crochet first like i say a lot of these things, actually all of these things, they're not going to be used for some time. Um, I have used <laughs> one of them because, like I say, I made it quite a while ago. Um, and I'm going to do my best to show you them here. But I am also have taken some photos and things. So um, in between me talking, I will pop up some photos. Now, I've got a new laptop. So editing is going to take a little while, I think, today, because I've got to either get the editing software that I had or try and find another one. The one that I had doesn't let me put pictures up here like a lot of people do. Um, so it might be that I disappear and a picture pops up or if I find something else, something a professional will appear here. So let's get on with it. I've got all my notes um, below you. So if I look down, that's what I'm doing. I do need my notes today because some of these things were made some time ago. I'll try not to wobble the camera. Um, just to remind me what I have done. So we will start with, with oh, like I say, there's a pile there and everything's going to come toppling down if I'm not careful. Um, so first item is, the Ziggy Jumper. Um, now, if you've watched my podcast before, you will know I have made one of these jumpers before. Like I say, it's called the Ziggy Jumper um, by Trudy Stevens. Um, and this is a double knit crocheted cropped jumper. Um, I've made one before. I think I've worn it in a podcast. It's um, different coloured, different shades of purple and pink stripes. This one I've done all in the same colour. It's a variegated yarn. So you can see it's like a V stitch. Let's try and show you a bit closer up. So it's a V stitch pattern. Um, it's all done in the round. I won't tell you too much. Obviously, it's a paid for pattern. Um, so yeah, this. Variegated yarn is a Stylecraft yarn. It's a Stylecraft batik, but they were called something else. I don't know, excuse me, if they um, if they actually sell it anymore. Batik, I can't remember. But they're not the you know if you know batik yarn, they're like a one colour yarn. Um, this is variegated, called bismuth. They're all different gemstones and things. I think. Oh, it might be elements. Batik elements. But for some reason, um, I had a whole bag full of this tucked away um, in the conservatory. You can just see the conservatory. I'm not showing any more than that because it is an absolute, um, putting it politely, pigsty. Uh, Ruth, if you're watching, you will know about the conservatory because you have been uh, one of the few people who's allowed to witness the mound of mess in there. So... Yeah, there was a bag full of that in there, um, DK, enough to make one of these. So off I went. Um, and I've been wearing this with these sort of like dresses and things. Um, well, I had been before 
the weather changed um, and I shall be wearing it again. So that is the first finished object is the Ziggy Jumper um, by Trudy Stevens. So that is the first one. I will put a photo in now. Somehow. So you can see it properly. Okay. So that is um, finished object number one. Um, and like I say, this is when I was um, off knitting altogether just wanted to crochet and it was literally one thing off the hook oh i've done that now I need to do some more crochet another thing on the hook um so i've got a couple more garments to show you uh this is the sam speedo section of the podcast um sam speedo is a crochet designer who goes under adventures in crafting you may follow her on instagram she sells her patterns on etsy she's also on tv sometimes on um yarn lane which is part of sewing stream um which is on the tv she's on there quite often if you watch Davina, which I'm sure you do, Davina from Little Workroom Crafts, you will know she too is a fan of Sam Sabido. Um, and she has got one same item as me. Um, she's just lo not long finished her. So let's see what we've got next. Um, this one has been on Instagram, so you may have already seen this. This is the Ripple Effect Jumper. So this one, again, um, well actually you could modify it, you can have it whatever length you wanted. I've gone for slightly cropped and um, three quarter length sleeves. So I can again wear it with dresses and things like this. So again, not going to be able to show you the whole thing because even if I lean back and um, try and hold it up, you can't see it. <laughs> so I will put a photo in somehow now. And then I shall tell you what this has been made from. This again is double knit and again is um, Stylecraft. Um, Stylecraft Special DK. I think the majority of Sam's patterns are double knit. Um, and she tends to use um, sort of commercial acrylic weight yarns and that kind of thing. Obviously, you, you could do it in whatever you wanted to. I had um, a stash of um, style craft. This actually is um, not all of the colours, but some of the colours from... Um, the cozy yes cozy blanket pack which actually was cara's um, but yeah cozy blanket pack which is sold by where wool warehouse um through the attic 24 shop so attic 24 which is lucy a lot of crochets will know her do does um beautiful crochet blankets and always does a color pack to go with them um so I didn't have to think a huge amount about putting colours together. This was already pretty much done for me. Like I say, it's not all the colours from that pack, but ones that, you know, I liked more than others or ones that I would wear. So, yeah, this is the Ripple Effect Jumper. You In the instructions, there's options to... Um, what am I trying to say? Put rib um, around the cuffs and around the bottom. But I've left, there was a, a photo sample that was left with the ripple edge, which I really liked. So I left that like that. So that is the Ripple Effect Jumper by Sam Svido. Just pop that one. Let's fold it up nicely and then just drop it on the floor. Um, okay, so that is finished object number two. 
and I could feel myself warming up because even just putting them on me um, is making me a little bit warmer. Now the, ne <laughs> the next one's even bigger because it's um, a cardigan. It's a very long cardigan. So it's going to be tricky to show you much of it now. I'll put a photo in. Um, stretch over. Oh, oh, there goes something. So, a big pile of loveliness. Um, this is the Jago, which stands for Join As You Go cardigan. Um, again, from San Speedo. Um, I've made a bit of a change um, when it comes to the sleeves. So, whoa, try and grab hold of it all. This is a, look, I'm not going to be able to show you it, um, a granny square, I just look like a big blanket, a granny square um, cardigan. So the join as you go refers to joining these granny squares together as you put them into the shape of the cardigan. Uh, this was um, a real brilliant stash buster. This is all from stash. Actually, I think I had to buy one more ball of the dark grey colour that I chose to join everything together um, and the pattern is great because um, depending on which size you do depends all you do is you make different sized granny squares and then join them all together in the, in the shape to make the cardigan um, obviously I'm a larger lady these are larger squares but if I just hold them up so you can get an idea of the sort of colours um, if you have been here for any length of time, you will know that I love um, neons and fluorescence and bright colours. So obviously that is what I had in stash. Um, so it is a very long cardigan. Um, it is one, whoa, one, two, three, four, five 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 squares long each square has eight rounds i think one two three four five six seven it has eight rounds so it's a really long this is going to be a really nice winter cardigan um like i say i made some alterations because the sleeves on the actual pattern are also made from granny squares joined together i decided instead of that I would do granny striped sleeves um, only because I found if I did um, the sleeve in squares, the, the sleeve was really big. Um, and if you're joining squares together as you go, I didn't think, well, I probably would be able to do it, but it would take a lot of maths. Um, working out the size of the squares to taper the sleeve down or to make the sleeve smaller. So to taper the sleeve, I've gone with, um, like I say, granny stripes. Um, and then on the, what would be the inside of the arm, have decreased. And I show you, whoa, that's the sleeve. So I went for the main colour, the, what are the use for the join in the, the bulk of the sleeve. Um, and then picked out a couple of colours that I had a lot left of, <coughs> excuse me, um, as a little detail around the cuff. So that, oh, <laughs> it keeps dropping off me. Um, that is the Jago, what did I say? It's called Jago Cardigan. Oh, very professional. And um, the Jago Cardigan from San Sabido. Now, now just bear with me while I try and fold this up because it is very big. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Again, a photo will have appeared at some point. Ooh. Okay, on the floor, in the pile it goes. Okay, um, just have another little quick drink. So let's go to yeah one more cardigan um, before we move into shawls. It's shawls and cardigans today. Um, 
but let's show you this one first before we get into the next bit. Another San Sabido pattern. This is a quite a new pattern. Um, and like I say, if you watch um, Davina over at the Little White Room Crafts, she has also made one of these lovely cardigans. I don't know what I'm trying to do here, to be honest. I'm trying to grab hold of it all. Again, it's a super warm, um, big cardigan. This one too is done in double knit, <laughs> I had to think there. Um, and it is called the Flower Power Cardigan. And I think, yes, I have put this on Instagram. So again, you might have already seen this. Again, too big to show you the whole thing, but I'll show you a little bit closer so you can see. This one is hexagons. If you make all the separate hexagons, then join them together. I'm trying to <laughs> grab it so you can, there we go, have a look. Um, again, this was another Stash Buster, all from Stash. Um, I'll try and show you all of the colours. So the main colour um, is a Signet Yarns, Signet Double Knit um, in Fern, which we I had a whole packet of... Um, I think I might have mentioned before, a while ago, me and Cara um, used to design crochet um, toys, crochet animals, and we used to make kits. So we have got quite a bit of um, sort of, I suppose, bulk yarn, <laughs> um, big packets of certain colours, <clears throat> and I had green, so that was handy. Um, so the green uh, is, like I say, Signet Double Knit and Fern. Then all of the flowers have been made using Stylecraft Special Double Knits. Um, and we have got, hopefully, be able to see all the different colours. So we've got, all the centres are yellow, which is dandelion. Dandelion, daffodil, dandelion. I think it's dandelion. Um, and so we've got this sort of coral, it's not showing up quite true there. It's a corally sort of colour, um, that shrimp. Then we've got orange, which is spice. Then we've got boysenberry, again showing up a little bit dark. Violet. pomegranate and magenta magenta yeah I think it's magenta I'll pop it in the description box below so um this pattern actually didn't take me very long at all because I was, I was really enjoying it I found at the moment that I am um quite monogamous with my projects normally I've got like loads of things on the go and I'm dipping in and out um and the moment it's been quite focused on one pattern at a time um what was I going to tell you then yeah it didn't, it didn't take very long um the way that I um went about doing it was to pick one colour and make all of those um, hexagons and then move on to the next colour so I'd make all of the middles for one section so I think you need something like um, let's say it's eight or nine hexagons of each colour so I'd make nine middles then add the flower so nine pink flowers then add the hexagon um, so I'd have a pile of finished hexagons sew all the ends in um, and then move on to the next colour so that's the way I went about it um, and I think it took something like 10 days to make. So really, I would sit in the evenings and just, I'm quite a quick crocheter, um, sit in the evenings and just whip up the uh, the colour while watching the TV, that kind of thing. The bit that took the longest probably <laughs> was laying it all out. Um, and then I took a photo on the phone and then joining them all together. That probably took the most amount of time. 
So that is the uh, Flower Power Cardigan by Sam Sabido. And again, I will pop in a photograph now. Okay. Now, I have just remembered that I have forgotten one of my uh, finished objects and it's behind my chair. Just bear with me one moment. Ugh. This is a variation of the Jago cardigan that I've already shown you. Now, I'm going to have to try and remember what, I think I know what everything is, um, what I've got here because I didn't write it in my book. This is, um, whoop, knocking things over, um, like I say, another Jago cardigan. This is a shorter version um, with short sleeves. It's too hard to show you. Um, I'll show you the back. So this. Um, one has been made using Signet Yarns again, Boho, which technically, I think they, I'm just looking because I've got some behind me, I think, technically they class as an Aran yarn, um, but it's a very fine Aran yarn, so I went, just make your life easier, don't worry. <laughs> um, um, and I've just used two colours for this one because I have sort of alternated between a variegated and solid so you get lots of different coloured squares because you're using a variegated yarn like i say this is a smaller version i've done um a cropped version if you like i've only done um three same size squares as the other one three squares long excuse me and then along the bottom um so i did the the three squares and then along the bottom added Um, added some rows of trebles um, so just one solid row of trebles here with a solid colour and then a couple of rows of granny stripe in the variegated and then finished it off with the solid again and I've done that on the sleeves um, to be fair there isn't really a sleeve on here because it's very um, low drop shoulder so I haven't added anything so I've just joined the squares together like it says and then just did one row of um trebles just to finish off the sleeve now i'm not 100 percent sure what colors these are either i don't know if i've got any of the ball bands if i can find the ball bands i'll pop it in the description bar below I think I've got actually. There we go. This is the excuse the rustling, the variegated. So this is um, boho spirit. Um, which is let's have a colour on. This is festival. Yeah. So they suggest. So it's a four, four and a half. So is that Aaron double knit? Some, somewhere in between. So you can see these are all the different colours in there. And then I added that, that solid yarn. I've just realised, looking at my camera, because it's the first time I've shown you some writing, hopefully this is the right way round. Um, I've normally got it set to flip. Um, but I haven't used it for a while and my phone updated recently so hopefully it hasn't changed that um yeah so that that is that other little bonus cardigan there that I had forgotten about so I think that's probably enough jumpers and cardigans. I'm sure I'll probably be making more, but I'm going to be very warm throughout autumn and winter. So that's two jumpers and three cardigans. So that's not not too shabby, is it? Oh, piles wobbling around. Um, okay, we've still got more crochet to go. 
but now we're moving into shawls um let's start with this really simple shawl because although it is finished i've noticed when i got it out that i haven't sewn the ends in so please excuse the ends i'll sort those out this um i did this one a while ago actually this is called the stegosaurus shawl um by anna hooker it's actually a free pattern on ravelry um, and it's a really simple one skein shawl i didn't use the whole um the whole skein i've got you know a little bit that will go in the scrappy project left i've had this skein of yarn for ages it's um from down sheepy lane who i don't think dies anymore i can't remember what the colorway is i'm afraid um so i haven't got the ball band anymore it's gone somewhere so let me show you rather than waffling on so it's a long quite a long if i start so we get really narrow And then the same on the other side so um it's sort of a just i need a little something around my neck type type of shawl um and i have done it on i did think i did this on a four mil hook which is quite big for four ply yarn but i like the um sort of it needs to be nice and drapey um the smaller hook was um making the fabric too tight so if I show you a bit closer up, so you can see, oh, let's find a bigger picture, shall we, rather than that little, there we go. So it's a really simple pattern. I think it's a, yeah, two row repeat. So it's this solid trebles, and then along the edge, you get these little bumps, which is, you know, if I put it like that, it's sort of the stegosaurus, you know, the dinosaur, the shape. Um, it's got a little bit squished because I think it's been uh, well it was I know it has been just in a project bag for ages I haven't I hadn't blocked it and I hadn't planned on blocking it because you know it was okay as it is but some of these have got a bit squished so this what well, this pattern works really well with um looks really pale there sorry I'm just distracted it's quite um a bright blue with all these neon speckles throughout it um works really well with a speckled yarn um i have tried before with um more of a variegated yarn where they the the colors are in sort of bigger sections um personally i didn't like the look of that bit sort of not necessarily pooling but sort of blocky because the the way the crochet stitches all line up the colours come out different, slightly differently to them, but they would as they were knitted up. So um, speckled yarn's really nice. I've made one for my my mum before, um, which she really likes, and it's a sort of it was also a speckled yarn. Um, she wears it quite a lot. So that is just a quick one skein little shawl, um, the Stegosaurus shawl. Whoop. So I shall leave that one out actually, put it somewhere different to the, the pile that's growing on the floor. So I remember to sew the ends in. I was going to say arms then, sew the arms in, sew the ends in. Let's, let's me try and fiddle around, hold it up nice, just pop it, just pop it down there and it will get done um, later. Okay, now we've got one more crochet shawl. Yeah, and then we're on to... Um, sorry, onto knitting. Now I've mentioned Ruth already. Lovely Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit is hosting a make along, knit along, whatever you want to call it. It is a cow, but it's for knitting and crochet. Um, she is running that um, alongside Fernanda from Little Monkeys and Me. And it is the Across the Pond Shawl Cow 22. Yes, I will put the um, hashtag on the screen and in the information below um 
lots of you will already know about this i'm sure most of you follow ruth and fernanda or both or one um and this cal has been running since first of july and runs till the end of september was it yeah end of september beginning of september i'm not 100 percent sure um <laughs> you have to i'll i'll check um and obviously it's a shawl cal um and it's make a shawl knit a shawl crochet a shawl any weight yarn um it just has to be a shawl not a scarf or um a cowl or a snood or something like that so <laughs> i have made quite a few shawls i do like shawls anyway um to wear and to knit or or crochet um so yes we've got a couple of shawls to show you so let's get on this um crochet shawl this is actually a gift this one um but i'll show you anyway this is the virus shawl um which is a crochet shawl um and i have knit this one knit this one crocheted this one um using uh, woolly knit double knit again i've had ball bands but i think they've been tidied um so i think the i want to say the colorway is called autumn but i'm not 100 percent sure and again i don't i think this might be a discontinued color or yarn anyway let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see the colors in there so there's sort of pinks and reds oranges yellows and greens um, and I had quite a bit of this in the stash oh sorry there's <laughs> a little bit on there and I thought what's that but um it's just where little bits come oh it's where I've sent the tail in <clears throat> excuse me so the virus shawl if you're a crochet you'll know this shawl I am sure it's been around for years I've made several this is quite a big version that I have made. Um, I can't show you the whole thing. So I think I used whoop, these are 50 gram balls, and I think I used five maybe. So what's that? 250 grams, something like that. Um, and it's been blocked. Um, which to be honest, I don't normally do with um with crochet shawls should do because it makes the pattern come come out obviously it's made the shawl quite a lot larger <clears throat> but with this being 100% wool as well I wanted to put it in some wool wash give it a soak that kind of thing um so yeah I followed the pattern as as is um really easy pattern actually um it's very you know there's i'm not sure how many row repeats it is but it's very repetitive um maybe if you're not a brand brand new crocheter but if you've done a couple of things you'll probably be able to get onto this um there is some counting involved as there is usually i have found because i've, I've like i said i've made this a few times and this is going back quite a few years when some of my um knit group friends had only just been crocheting they'd only done one or two things they were able to make one of these um because i printed out the chart for them um so it's a free pattern there are you can find written instructions it's a bit tricky to find those um there's youtube tutorials and there's a chart so that's that's what I've used. I don't normally use charts, but for this, because it's so easy, once you've done one repeat, two repeats, you'll you'll get there. Um, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Um, and it's quite easy if you look at it. And if you've made a mistake, you can see it quite, quite easily. And unlike knitting, if you've uh, made a mistake, sometimes with knitting, it's like, oh, I'm going to have to rip loads back or I'm going to have to unknit um, with crochet because you're only working on one life stitch at a time it's a lot easier to fix your mistakes I find. Um, the only addition I have made to this one is I have finished off with a 
crab stitch. You see that? Round the edge, which is a really, I really like that stitch. Finishes things off nicely, I think. So that is the virus shawl, like I say. And that is my, it was the first thing I made for the Across the Pond cow, although I don't think I've put it on Instagram um, or shared it anywhere. So that needs to go on. And then um, my knitting mojo picked up um, after that. Sometimes I think, I don't know if, what, what other people are like when you lose your interest in a certain craft. I don't know what it is that pings it back. Um, but I found a particular pattern that I wanted to do. So I think a combination of there's a cowl going on, um, there's a new pattern out that I liked and a uh, discount code <laughs> for a pattern. It all came together um, and that's... That's how I got back into the knitting. And the pattern that got me back there was um, this one. So we're going into knitting now. This is um, a bit of a Stephen West section. You will know, again, if you've been here for some time, I am a big Stephen West fan. Um, oh, actually, there's only two, two Stephen Wests, but I am working on some of his other patterns. This is the Crystal Fragments Shawl. This is a really long shawl. Um, I have put this on Instagram. Again, I will put a photo in at some point, but I will show you what I can now. So, starting at this corner, I think it's a parallelogram. So, a point down here going up and then across and then pointing back up that way. I think that's parallelogram, isn't it? So, anyway. Let's let's show you. So starting down here, um, and then we've, so we've got this point there, and then it goes across whoa, into this um, long section, and then tapers back down to another point. Um, I think this particular pattern was designed, um, this long middle section was designed using a, this is when I make a fool of myself, zopper ball, zopper ball. I've used one before for socks. Um, yeah, that's what it was designed for because it made, um, get that sort of gradient of colour um, or striping kind of long stripe effect I didn't have one of them but I did have this lovely colour for the middle so again this is all from Stash searching through um, took me a while to make, make my mind up but got there in the end so the colours that I have got I think I have got the ball bands for this So that big long middle section was um, by Fleabubs, Fleabubs by Layla or Lala, I'm not sure, Fleabubs by Lala um, and this colourway is called Always the Bridesmaid and it is a superwash merino nylon high twist. So that is that first colour. Then I'll put them down there. So that was that one. Then we've got this bright bluey purple pinks, which is actually the colour that I've used for the eye cord bind off. Oops, the eye cord bind off as well. Wouldn't be a Stephen West shawl without a massive eye cord bind off, would it? Um, and that is uh, Mermaid Romance by Siobhan's Crafts 
um, and that again is a four ply, it's an 85% superwash pole wash, is it pole, pole wash? 15% uh, nylon so that is that one that's some of these yarns have been in my stash for quite some time um, and also actually some of them were people de-stashing nice nice people that thought oh I don't you know I'm not using this anymore um maybe Hannah would like them which is always appreciated um this next color here the white with a different shades of blue in that was a de-stash someone kindly gave me and is a Vicky Brown Designs and that is um from a shawl club the September shawl club again four ply 75% superwash merino 25% nylon that is that one this blue here this darker blue I don't have a ball band for that was um, some leftovers that someone kindly sent my way next one is this it's not showing up as bright as it actually is so blues and greens and turquoises that is a dye candy yarn um, and that one is Mermaid Tails and again is um, Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. Oh, and the last colour in there is this sort of variegated, um, sort of tonal purple. That's one of my own hand dyes. So that, oh, great big shawl. Is there was my first official entry to the Across the Pond shawl. Across the Pond shawl? Across the Pond cap. Across the Pond cap. What is it? I've, I've lost the plot. <laughs> that, you know, that um, knit along, that, that make along I was talking about is for that. I was thinking of putting it on then, but I, I don't think I can, I'm afraid. So, anyway. Stop waffling, Hannah. Get on with it. That is the um, crystal fragment shawl. Right, let's, let's, let's move on to the next one. Before I, I lose the plot completely. So I'll try the, the folding up nicely has gone out the window a bit. Right, okay. The next um finished item i have shared lots of progress of this one on instagram i have loved making this for some reason it really this that was the only really monogamous project nothing else was getting in the way of this one this um is also an entry for the across the pond but is also i also entered it in um, a different hashtag from alex lovely alex um, over at my Yarny Corner, I'm sure a lot of you already follow her, is running a make-along, um, inspiration make-along. I'll put the hashtag on the bottom. Um, and <clears throat> you can make anything as long as you have been inspired by someone else. So you share it on the hashtag and you tag the person that inspired you to make it just to sort of share some of the love um, and let other let other talented people know that they've inspired you to have a go maybe something different something new um i was inspired by alex herself i have been you know watching along of her progress of this particular item as well this is the vertices unite short um which again is a stephen west pattern i think it's been out for quite a long time and i was i've always had it in my head that i didn't like this pattern but it turned out I was looking at the wrong pattern. Um, Stephen West also has on his, you know, on his pattern store, a Vertices Unite blanket, but I think it's a baby blanket. And you know when you scroll through and you see the pictures and you think, oh no, I'm not, don't like that one, scroll past. Um, it was a weird, it's a weird shape. I, it was all sort of, it was a weird shape and I thought, how am I going to wear that? 
then watching Alex make her versus Unite and she showed the picture of it, I thought, oh, that's a triangle. That's not what I was looking at. I'll have another look. Looked at it and thought, actually, yeah, that's really nice. And I love the modular knits that Stephen West does. So like that Crystal Fragments shawl, um, it's all knitted in one piece. There's no joining, no seaming. It's just the technique, the modular technique that he does to join the colours together. And I have done lots of his other patterns that way. Um, I think there's actually one called the modular that I did um, for Cara. Um, and I've done the jig shawl. I've done two of those. Um, I've just bought his jigsaw puzzle blanket pattern. Um, so he's got a discount code on that at the moment if you're interested in that one um so i bought that as well um but yes this one let's talk about this one this is the vertices unite um and like i say alex is making hers, hers is looking beautiful um i know we've been talking and she was saying you know you you've been keeping me going um and she's desperate to try and get it finished it is a big project i have to say um but it's it's all data and i find that very um easy knitting washing the tv knit, knit, knit. Get, get a bit of speed up um some of the sections are striped takes a little bit longer only because you're working with two bits of yarn um i tend to keep one ball either side of me so i don't get too tangled up um but yeah i watched her pod latest podcast yesterday um, I should say, do you know, I haven't told you when, when I, when I am, um, because you could be watching this thinking, well, what are you on about yesterday that what's happening? It is the, she says this and then doesn't know what the day is, the 12th of August. Um, it's a Friday. I know that much. <laughs> so yeah, it would have been because Alex's podcast comes out on a Thursday. So yeah, it would have been yesterday. A oh, jibber jabber. Um, yeah, Alex is making hers. She is on. She was on section three when I saw yesterday. Yeah, obviously she's one of these people as well who has lots of different whips on the go and doing different things. Um, and she is big into socks at the moment. If you've watched my podcast before, you'll know that I am a sock knitter and I have. I do like do like socks and socks and sock knitting. Whoops. But um, no no interest in socks at the moment she was saying yesterday she's got everyone's sock mojo and i think she's stolen mine um because mine's gone anyway let's stop waffling on and show you this beautiful um shawl <laughs> oh dear um okay again it's a whopping great shawl i have taken some photos but here we go Start down here, and then we've got where the next section joins. The next one, all the way to the end, and another enormous eye cord bind off. Um, I do like an eye cord bind off. It finishes off a project really nicely. Um, and it's not difficult, but it takes a long time, especially when you've got a bazillion stitches like on one of these. So let me talk you through what we've got here. So the first section is this blue and purple stripe. Um, again, everything from stash. Um, and actually majority of this is my own dyed yarns as well so blue and purple stripe that's me that's my uh yarns that i've dyed next section oh not showing up brilliantly there the contrast that is um yellow and green so the yellow is my own hand dyed the green has been in lots of projects now didn't use up a huge amount it is um dyed in the wool from ellie um what color is it tox 
six something. I'll I'll put it in the description. I've used it on different projects, um, like I say. So that is um, in that yellow and green section. Then the star of the show, section three. I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you. Oh, it's showing up slightly better. It is beautiful. It is bright and there's all different colours in there. How close can I get to the camera without it saying no? Can't see it. So it's got everything in there really. Pinks, blues, yellows, greens. Sort of this, it's not brown, but it's sort of like a, maybe like a burgundy, purpley type of affair. That one um, <clears throat> is a, what I call a special yarn. Um, this was a Christmas present from mum last, last year. Yeah. Um, and this is one of my favourite yarn dyers. You'll know, um, you'll know I've used his yarn a lot. This is James Makes Yarns and this is um, the Nutcracker. So one of his Christmas colourways. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Absolutely beautiful. And I've got a bit left, which is going in another project. <clears throat> so that is that whopper section. Um, big section, but you're not having to change colours with that one. So I was going to say it doesn't take as long, but you know what I mean. Um, right, next section was this one which is sort of a purpley burgundy i can't pick up on the camera but it's got little flecks you might just be able to pick out little flecks of blue and yellow throughout it which i thought picked up the sort of the darker tones in that one i don't this is the only one that i don't know what it is it was um a leftover from probably from someone kindly donating um yeah, so that's section four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Section five, we move into this blue and green section, which again is my own hand dyed. Oh, there we go, put my hand behind it, you can see a little bit better. Last section um, is the purple from the striping section at the beginning. And the uh, bind off is in that bright yellow. Um, it, I'm so happy with this, so happy with it. Um, I'm really pleased that I was watching Alex's progress on it because I wouldn't have, because, because of looking at the wrong pattern, I would never have, never have made it probably. Um, and I did say to her, I'm probably going to have to make another one soon because I'm knitting away and Cara's looking at it. And then looking at it, oh, who's that for? It's not for you, it's for me. <laughs> but she would, would very much like one. So maybe in, when the cooler months come along, um, she will probably get one. Um, and I think mum's going to make her own. She's like, like the look of it as well. So the inspiration has gone far, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, I haven't blocked it because and i don't think i'm going to it's super squish garter um so there's nothing you know pattern wise in the stitching that needs to be to be highlighted um and i find if i block um sometimes with big garter projects you lose that squish and because this is such a big squishy winter short i want to keep it that way the only thing is that this point here doesn't have that real crisp point I'm not too worried about that because once it's on it's going to be all squishy around <laughs> if that's even a word I have taken a photo and I will pop it in now that is the vertices unite shawl by Stephen West Okay, one more knitted object and then we can move on. So, <laughs> it's a little bit of, I have to tell you, 
be honest i've done a little bit of instagram cheating this has been finished for a couple of days and i only put on yesterday the actual ball of wool and um, skein balled up um so people are probably going to think oh my gosh how she's knitting that really quick full disclosure no it's <laughs> it took a couple of days um but i just cheated on instagram this is um the mindfulness shawl i can't remember who it's by if you've watched ruth you'll know she's knit a hundred of these <laughs> but the only thing is this is the mindfulness shawl yes but i haven't done the pico edging and you'll see why um because of the type of yarn that i've used this is um from one of my other favorite dyers the discreet unicorn miriam she had um a, not a sale she had a discount code for a couple of different colors and her birthday was on the same day as mine so i thought right i'm going to use my birthday money some of my birthday money actually for my nanny and buy some of this beautiful yarn that i wanted to try for ages knobbly bobbly yarn she calls it i don't know if that's what all dyers have it down as um so this is knobbly bobbly yarn in um the colorway pixelated unicorn so it's sort of wiggly yarn if you haven't used it before it's really hard to there we go wiggly yarn with these big uh bobbles in amongst it so let me show you the um ball band quickly that's miriam's logo this is pixelated unicorn on knobbly bobbly and oh it's lovely really i've it's such a nice drape on it i i think it's a class as a four ply yarn i'm not 100 percent sure um i knit this on um a four and a half millimeter needle and it's it, i tried it on three seven five because i didn't have a four um and it would it, it just didn't look right so I only done a little bit did a little bit took it off started again and this is so much better so this is just a little one get it the right way up one skein shawl and i literally knit until there was nothing left um there was you know about that much i had left so there we go the little narrow point So, and you can see, really bouncy, drapey, absolutely gorgeous, lovely colour. Blow, it's not showing true there. It's a beautiful, sort of bright bubblegum pink with some dark pinks and oranges and blues and greens. There's a little bit there, like, can you see there's some colours? Absolutely lovely. Um, and a really nice yarn base um i'd imagine this is probably one of maybe one of those yarn bases people are like oh i love it or i don't like it <laughs> um because of those interesting novels i really like it and i'm thinking it would make a really nice little um cropped jumper little just like a little cover up top um the uh the rift uh crop jumper can't remember who it's by um but i've made one of those before and i think that would be perfect in this really lovely swishy drapey yarn so that is that that is it's all of the crochet all of the knitting all of the wooliness um how are we doing oh getting near that hour mark let's whiz through the next part shall we um not going to take too long hopefully because there's a lot of similarity going on here let's go with sewing quickly i'll just grab my books um again if you've seen before i have made a couple of these i'm just looking around the house to see where they are um lunar lapam you'll know that i've made these before i've made two lunars um and I've shown some kits and things that I've purchased before. These are going to fall off. I'll put them down there. Um, yeah, so let me quickly show you. I've got 
one completely finished dressed lovely one of my very favorites creatures um and then three naked ones um so i'll show you those first so let me show you i think i showed you when i um purchased the pattern for this one this is i love this one so cute um otterline otter with her little jointed legs she's got a little tail which is actually on a popper so i think when you get addressed and things you can pop it off um shows her little face i really really like this one um again so like i said this was a kit i bought so I buy this one? Yeah, I think I bought this one at West Point and next to a uh, craft show. So that's um, Otterline. She will get some clothes. All of these nudies will get some clothes at some point. Um, this little one is going to be coming out in the latest book. I think it comes out in November. So that's that one. Then these two are from books. The patterns are from books, but I purchased the kits from um, Sarah Peel from Cool Crafting. Um, again, information will be down below. You can buy the patterns from her, you can buy the kits from her, um, you can buy remake kits, which are just the um, materials that you need. So let me show you. Wilhelmina Woodmouse is from uh, Luna Lapan's Friends. marker in the book there she is so there's Wilhelmina my Wilhelmina um has some clothes here she is let me just adjust her whiskers she's got little elasticy whiskers um she's got different legs if you've made Luna's before um she's got the legs like Luna that are attached when you sew her body on rather than jointed like previously um she's got a little curly tail um and this like i say is from a kit so you get absolutely everything you need wool felt and all the little fabrics so for the insides of her ears and her foot pads a little liberty torn lawn yeah liberty torn lawn um bits bits that you use for those um buttons for the eyes this sort of elastic -y thread for her whiskers one poking her in the eye bless her um the only difference i made on this one was instead of embroidering the nose i used a little scrap of felt that i had so that is woo, wilhelmina woodmouse these are normally on my mantelpiece so they've got to go it's looking very bare over there at the moment um next one is from this book luna lapan making new friends and this is uh, ba -ba 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 -bam, rowan the squirrel i'll write back here there she is again i bought the kit for this one because mainly because of the fluff for her tail i didn't really know where to source that what i was looking for Woo. and here she is in has that great big fluffy tail um these have all been hand sewn um so the instructions do give you options for bits for machine sewing everything i've done is hand sewn um so hand sewing this was quite um quite interesting very new, new technique to me obviously you sew it inside out so the inside is different but then when you turn it out the right way you've got to pick all the fluff out of seams when you cut it up fluff goes in everywhere um, and if you leave a little bit of it lying around on the sofa and don't tell people and they see it, it can give them quite a shock um, again she's her tail is you can't quite see but is fixed on with poppers so for changing their clothes and things like that 
Um, again, she is more like the traditional Luna with her legs attached in her body. She's got her little Liberty foot pads. So those are the three that need arms, oh, um, that need clothing. So cover yourselves up, girls. Right, that's those three. Ooh. Then I have one more Luna creature. Oh, excuse me. Um, and I was looking for his pattern and I can't find it. But I did show you this before that I'd had. I'm so happy with this one. Um, and actually, when people have been around, they're like, oh, I really like that. That's nice. Um, don't know why I'm whispering. Let me just show you. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> this is Eric the polar bear. Polar bears are my favourite animal. So obviously, I had to have him. Um, so I bought the kit from Cool Crafting, this one, the full shebang, the pattern, the everything, and then I bought the separate pattern for all his clothes. Um, yeah, he's not out yet. I think he's gonna be in the new book. I'm not sure, I can't remember. <laughs> um, so, the actual bear, there he is. Oh, he's so cute. Um, this one again, wool felt, little Liberty Prince for his ears and his foot pads. Um, this one was the first one to have safety eyes in the kit. My Ludens have got safety eyes because I chose to put those in there in the books, they've got buttons. Um, but again, this has all been hand sewn, didn't do any sewing on the machine for this. The pattern for his clothes, yeah, are. Told, you know, it does tell you how to do them on the machine. I just, so, I really, I'm so happy with this one. The coat was very difficult. Um, I did have to make a few little, um, not changes, but a few little areas that needed fudging to work properly. So he's got a wool felt duffel coat with little pockets, real pockets. Um, and then these little toggles that are fixed on with little faux leather patches and he's got a little hood and this um i can't remember what this bit's called is it a yoke is it the same as the knitting this little little bit there then under his coat he has um boiled wool waistcoat again little pocket and little toggles and then some lovely check trousers so they have got little cuffs little tapered pegs are they peg trousers peg leg trousers oh, peg leg trousers that's not right is it i can't remember what they're called but they're little tapered trousers a little cuff little drawstring waist I just, I mean, I don't know how much I can tell you. I absolutely love him. Um, and you can get a kit to make a brown bear. And I think I might have to, at some point, make a little one. So, I mean, as lovely as they are without their clothes on, how cute is that? Just like really like him. <laughs> um, and he lives up on the top of this... Um, unit up there normally so cute so that's the little sewing section um ooh, for now um cross stitch let me just grab my book because i need to remember who the pattern things are by so actually you may have seen some of these cross stitches again going back to lovely davina she helped me out with um so it's, i've used some new products that i don't normally haven't used before for my cross stitch and i needed a little bit of help actually she was the the one who i saw her doing all of her beautiful cross stitches i thought i'm going to give that a go this sort of um i think they've got like a primitive design a lot of american designers um and using some different threads called over dyed threads um these are the brand that i've used are classic color works so 
I did send a picture of this to her because she wanted to see how it had all gone. So this is the first one that I have finished. This is the May Sampler from Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, if I just get a little bit closer. So I have used um, Classic Colourworks over-dyed over threads. So you get this sort of variegated colour. So you can see like these flowers here are all from the same blue thread, but you get different shades in amongst them. Um, and so it's the first time using these threads. The first time that I have cross-stitched on linen rather than Ada. This is a, I think it was a 28 count linen. Um, I love how it looks. But I don't think I'll be I'll be um, using linen again for cross stitch. It was it wasn't difficult, but it did you need, I did need to pay attention a lot more. Linen obviously is a natural fabric. It doesn't have that natural um, that even um, spacing between the threads, so they can be a little bit a um, little bit different. You also, if you're a cross stitcher, you'll know uh, if you use Ada, which you know is sort of what people consider, you know, think of when they think of cross stitch fabric. You have your four holes, and you make a cross. With linen, you do what they call over two, to over the two threads. So it's actually um, two, three. So over, you do like over nine holes. So it's you it's really difficult to explain you have to sort of skip a hole and it, it took a bit more concentration so it's it, just explaining it it's difficult enough but i am really pleased with it i finished it off um i've never done this before either i normally just put them in a frame or keep them in their hoop and display them that way this um was inspired by davina um you know made a little felt flower to match one of the um, designs. We've got different layers of coloured papers that pick out the colours from there and a bow on the top. And that is that one. The only difference I made to this particular pattern was it's called May Sampler and it should say May here, which I just left off because I like the design rather than it being specific to the month. So that's the first cross stitch. The other one also Davina has shown, and I think um, she was quite happy, she quite liked it. Um, she was a little bit excited um, about, because I've done um, coloured threads on black Ada, so she's um, now also doing a coloured threads on black Ada. <laughs> this is um, the Granny Square cross stitch design. Hopefully, yeah, it's going to off the lights this one's behind glass um granny squares by laurie holt this was a free design um i have done this one like i say on black ada and then i've used a rainbow of dmc threads from stash and then done them in order that's gonna be really hard for you guys to see i think you can see all of my uh living room <laughs> lights bouncing off all over the place i can't what about this side? Mm, not really. Um, yeah, so super easy pattern. Really enjoyed that one. Um, and I think it does look very effective on black. Just a cheap frame. This was from the range, which is a big sort of store in the UK. Um, yeah, not much else to say on that one. Get this was Ada this time even if it was on black. So that is that one. That's actually going on the wall at some point. And the final finish, but not fully finished, if that makes sense. Um, oh, my brain. Cross stitch project is in my little... This is from a seller on Etsy called Turtle Bay. Little cross stitch pouch. Again, I have used, actually I've got them here, Classic Colourworks threads. Um, 
don't know if I'll be able to show you on camera that the, the variegated colour of them. Oh, that one might show up. Sort of goldy colour. Let's have a look. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. There's a variegation in the the hand. I, I think I think I heard Davina say they're like DMC threads that someone's then re dyed. I think that's what she said. Um, yeah. So I'll just pop one back in there. So I know where this is going to be turned into a little pillow. When I can get the sewing machine out, um, this is um, Autumn Bird and Acorn. This is just the bird part. This is from Plum Street Samplers. And again, in like I said, in the classic Colourworks threads. Um, slightly different because I think the pattern calls for different threads. I think I converted them. If you go online um, and put in... I don't know, DMC to Colourworks, you can find converters for all of those. So, I don't know what, I really like, they've been looking at this one for ages. Um, so I had this little, cute little bird. Um, like I say, he's going to be turned into a pillow. So for autumn, he can go out on the on the mantelpiece. This one is has been done on 14 count Ada, but it's, um, like a natural colour. I think I don't know if it I think it was called oatmeal. So you can see it's got all these different little tones in it. So that that one. And that is it. We've made it to the end. Um just double checking. I was thinking, oh, I've forgotten something. No, right. And that has taken oh a long time. So I um We'll leave whips and I'll leave the whips and the new bits and pieces to show you next time because this has taken quite a while. Um, yeah, that is everything. Sorry about that. Cara's just come in. She's been out. She's come in. She, she's oh, what are you doing? Um, yeah, so let's quickly round up. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I know, like I said, it's been a long time. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the pile of things that I've been up to. Um, if you wanted to see what I was working on, sorry about that, but I'll spare you some time. You've, you've, you've stuck with me for, for quite some time. I think that's probably enough. <laughs> um, and hopefully I'll show you, like I say, on Instagram, you can follow me along there and see what I'm up to. Um, I'm not going to say I will see you in a week, two weeks, whatever. I will see you when I see you. Um, and I'll show you what I have been up to. Um, I think that's probably everything. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to um, those subscribers that stuck with me all the way from the beginning or throughout the, uh, the podcast. Thank you to those new subscribers that have come along. Um, we're just... I'm at definitely at the 500 mark now, um, might be just slightly over. So thank you so much. Um, again, if someone has recommended you to, no, recommended me to you, let me know. That'd be, that would be really nice. Um, any questions, leave them down below. Any comments, always really greatly appreciated. Liking the video, um, subscribing always helps the, uh, the channel grow, which is brilliant. Um, and I think that's it i think i've said that enough times now so i will definitely say one more time thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon thanks everyone bye